The Nigerian Bar Association and some senior advocates of Nigeria and the Oyo State Governor Shei Makinde have cautioned President Muhammadu Buhari against amending the Land Use Act. While the NBA and senior lawyers said the federal government's move was unconstitutional, Makinde stated that he would not support it. Earlier, the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, had said the federal government was reviewing the Land Use Act of 1978. Mustafa said the review would take out sections of the act that inhibited economic development. Well, joining us to discuss this is Tunji Abdulhamid. He, uh, he's a lawyer and, of course, Elvis Asya, uh, both of them lawyers. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you for having me. Uh, Tunji, why do you think the NBA is cautioning Mr. President against this Land Use Act um, review? Um, is there something wrong with reviewing it? I mean, because Boss Mustafa has said that, it, so in his words, in, it inhibits economic development. I, I am surprised that the, the question is coming out. I don't know why they are cautioning the federal government. They feel... We, as, far, because, as far as I'm concerned, the comment by the condemnation of the review or by or ask or calling to our constitutional is premature as far as I'm concerned. It's speculative because we have not even seen the review they're talking about. I probably they want to do a B to the National Assembly. Probably they want to do the not see the step they're taking. So we can, it will be premature for us to say it is unconstitutional for now. So I don't know what the NBA is talking about when they say it, uh, it, it, they're going to oppose it. Except it's not done in line with the law, which, in other words, no review of a, a land use act can be effective except it passes through the National Assembly uh, for, for, for the act to be amended. So if that is good being done, I don't see what is unconstitutional about that. Except they want to, they want to just amend the constitution at uh, the land use act without going through the National Assembly. That, and in that circumstance, it will be unconstitutional for them to do that. But as it is today, I cannot say that because I am not aware of what uh, uh, of any step being taken to do that in the in, now. They, you, are, you are free to review. When you review it, you can come up with your own uh, position, probably in terms of bill or in terms of suggestion to, the, to, to those who, wants, who, are, who wants to bring, it, bring out the pay for them to be passed by the National Assembly. As far as I'm concerned, it's going to be premature. It will be speculative for us to say it is not proper as it is now. Um, Mr. Asia, uh, do you um, hold the same opinion with Tunji? Because he seems to say that there's nothing to be worried about. If it's a review, then it's a review. But then, of course, the NBA and um, certain people have spoken up against it, calling it, uh, calling it unconstitutional. Uh, but it's a review. Do you have any concerns? Well, I think uh, what you just said is largely correct uh, in the sense that it is largely uh, premature to begin to talk about the constitutionality of a process that has not even started. Uh, the Constitution is very clear on how uh, you can amend uh, the Land Use Act. The Land Use Act can only be amended in a manner um, as if you are amending the Constitution, you know, just subject to Section 9 of the Constitution. Uh, so, and then again, we haven't again seen what exactly they want to amend. So it's, you know, to a very extent, uh, premature to begin to talk about the constitutionality of the process. But I, I, I understand the, the, um, where the fear is coming from, uh, from the governors, from the NBA and stakeholders. The fear is that uh, this amendment uh, is not all connected with the attempt by the federal government to still maintain grazing roots uh, with respect to the issue that, you know, uh, with respect to uh, farmer header clashes over the country. I think that is, appears to be the fear that people have. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at it, uh, we have all clamored for uh, the review of Land Act over, over the years. In fact, since uh, the first week the Act was enacted, you know, there have been a lot of criticism with respect to the amendment of the Act. Um, you know, we, we, they, we, uh, there, there are so many problems with the Act with respect to registration, seeking consent, and the fact that that frustrates um, the process of land documentation across the country. So uh, there is a, a you know, genuine need for the Act to be amended. Uh, but I believe the fear is, is, has to do with the federal government stand on, on open grazing, uh, which okay. is you know, seriously archaic and uncalled for at this at this time of, the, of our nation's development. Yeah. And back to you, Tunji. The, I'm going to quote the or your state governor and the Eboing state governor, um, Shea Makinde and his Eboing counterpart, uh, Umahi. Um, they are advising Mr. President to uh, not take steps 
to take away land control from the state, saying that it is unconstitutional. Uh, being that, according to them, land, the, according to the Constitution, um, the power and ownership of land lies with the state. And just as um, Asia has said, uh, do you think that the federal government really is insistent and um, wants to take the powers of the state away from it by reviewing this constitution, um, this act? And why, do, why, would, why would that be? I, I think uh, it, be, uh, it is funny to me in the sense that, look, there is no way the president can uh, change the provision of the constitution of the land use act without uh, going through the proper amendment. There's no way it, can, it can't. It can't happen. It can't. It can't happen. We're not. We're, in, we're a country ruled by law or governed by law. So in other words, if, if any attempt to alter, refuse, change, alter, or whatever of the land use act, I think probably the, it will be sent to the national assembly, and at that level, everybody will be involved. You know, like like every said, there's no way you can amend land use act without the involvement of the national assembly and without the involvement of the other, other assembly of the states. So at that level, there's no way the president can on his own amend any provision of the Constitution or change the, or take the power away from the governor without any amendment of the land use act. So it would be improper for me to say it is it will, be, it, 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 it will happen because I, I don't see it how it will happen without it. The president doesn't have such power and he can't do that. So and I, don't, I don't expect that he will do that. Probably they want to do a B to the National Assembly. He can do a B to say, okay, remove the power. If, we, if, if the B scales through at the National Assembly and the House of Assembly, so be it. But if you do not skate, if you didn't skate through, you know, for, for you to pass that bill into law, or to amend that uh, land use act, you must go to the place of amending the constitution, which means you must have two thirds of the members of the National Assembly agreeing to it. You must have two thirds of members of the House of Assembly in the states agreeing to it. In other words, there must be all well, first reading, second reading, all these uh, processes must, be take, must take place. So I don't see how the president can on his own just take away the power from the governor without the involvement of the National Assembly and the House of Assembly of the, of, 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 of the, of the states. Okay. So it's, 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 not, it's going to be impossible for anybody or in, any individual to just take away the power as given by the, by the land use act under section one. That section empowers the governor to, be, to, to hold the land in trust for the country, uh, for, this, for, the, for, the, for the people in the states. So and it will be improper for anybody, to be unconstitutional for anybody. Nobody has such power to individually take away the power. And thinking from the position, Elvis, um, this is for you. Uh, a position. I mean, we all saw that interview by um, the um, by Malami speaking up on the issue of open grazing. We also heard Mr. President also throw his weight behind uh, the issue of open grazing and asked expressly that uh, Mr. Malami, you know, review the issue of um, grazing roots. Now, if the president had seen that. This is the process that this review has to go through. Is there room for an executive order in regards to these oh, these grazing routes being, um, you know, brought back alive? No, no uh, it's not possible to, by an executive order, um, uh, begin to do uh, go back to open grazing. The law is very clear on who controls land, and uh, that is the governors at, at, at various state levels. The president cannot, by any order, there's no law that uh, gives the president the power to uh, change that or to, you know, revisit this issue of open grazing. And it is quite sad that, you know, in, uh, at this uh, stage of our national development, we are still talking about open grazing. Uh, when what, what we should be talking about is how uh, herdsmen and other people who are interested in um, cattle rearing, how they can, you know, do ranching. Uh, you know, they can even maximize, you know, the business and make more profit uh, for, for the nation. Uh, so to begin to talk about open grazing, it's really quite sad. And I believe this is the, re the genuine um, reason why a lot of stakeholders are raising eyebrows now at this time. You know, um, like I said earlier, you know, there has been cause for uh, the Amendment of Life Act. And the presidency hasn't done much in that regard over the years. Um, but in the midst of this discussion with respect to uh, open grazing, to now start revisiting uh, you know, the, the amendment process is really what is getting people worried. But I can assure you that there's no uh, constitutional or statutory provision that empowers the president to issue any directive, uh, whether by way of executive order or otherwise, um, you know, to uh, 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 you know, give legal backing to this idea of open grazing. Um, the president doesn't have power, 
And I think every woman in Nigeria should uh, uh, oppose any attempt mm. to take us uh, backward uh, to uh, the, 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 I mean, an age that has been abandoned by other countries. Okay. There are those who have said that um, the Land Use Act puts Nigeria in uh, a 300 billion naira debt, Tunji. And like I said, um, there are the Institute of Sub Estate Surveyors in Nigeria uh, have been quoted to say that um, the review of the act will take out sections of that same act that inhibits economic development. So, in your opinion, um, looking at knowing what the content of the you know the the Land Use Act of 1978 is, um, what are those parts that you think? inhibits the growth of the, our economy and 300 billion naira is a lot of money uh, what exactly in that land use act would help us to get past this but most probably they are maybe they are, they are likely talking about the process of, of obtaining governor's consent because you know under our under land use act section 20, 21 22 of land use act before you can uh, alienate transfer or mortgage your property you must obtain governor's consent most states are taking this uh, process as a means of making money. In Lagos, for instance, you, it's a lot of money to, to process your, uh, to, to, to your registration of your documents. So probably people are not uh, uh, taking these uh, processes. They are not doing it because, they, because of the, of the, of the, the financial uh, involvement or, uh, 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 in it. So I, I think, that, and, and, and for, for instance, if you want to borrow money in bank or you want to do businesses, you want to use a land to, as a security for loan. Without it being registered, you cannot uh, use that. Probably that's the area they are looking at. Look, without this uh, 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 review of this uh, consent process, they may be, it, 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 it's inhibiting people from engaging in the business or in engaging in the getting finance to do to carry out their businesses. Probably that is the area they are looking at in, the, in terms of uh, uh, economic uh, loss. So uh, the, the, the process of uh, obtaining consent is too com is some, in some state is cumbersome, in some state is a uh, the financial uh, which is, 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 is much. So it, it involves a lot of uh, finance for you to... Sometimes, in, in fact, in some states, uh, you, the, the, the amount you purchase land, the amount you'll be using in, in processing the, the consent may even be more than the amount, the, 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 the price of the land itself. So that, that inhibits people from going ahead and, and perfecting property. And in that regard, you won't be able to use land to secure any advantage in terms of getting finance from any way. Probably ah. that is the area they're looking at. Interesting. And I, I, I want to also agree that those areas should be refilled and it should be made simple so that people will not uh, be, be, be involved in spending a lot of money in uh, obtaining governor's consent. It's not a source of income for most states. They, get, they generated a lot of money that, uh, that they make a lot of money, uh, particularly in legal states, in terms of uh, 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 consent. Uh, and back to you, Elvis, before we wrap this up. Um, for the NBA and lawyers who seem to be opposing this, uh, should, the, should the idea not be carrying more people along to be part of the review process to educate people uh, on you know making sure that they are you know taken along when the national assembly decides to review this and make their impuse because of course whatever is the outcome of this review will have to live with the consequences you're right um, you know the duty of the nba and other stakeholders should be when you know there's a proper b before the national assembly uh, you know, for them to put in their input, because at some point during the legislative process, uh, members of the public are allowed to make comments, they're allowed to participate in, in the public hearing. Um, and, and so groups like uh, and the MBA and other stakeholders will have the opportunity uh, to make their input. And, also, and then they can also mobilize other people uh, to be part of the process. So uh, I, don't, I don't think the best way to do uh, to participate in the process is to uh, attack the process that has not even started. We haven't seen the draft bill, um, you know, uh, so uh, it's, uh, that is, that, that's not the proper way to, to go about this. You are right with respect to the fact that the process should be uh, that they will be able to mobilize people uh, to be part of the process of amending the law. There is the genuine need um, for, for amendment. And like Tuji has said, there are other um, issues, you know, uh, that are impeding progress in development of the, of the country uh, under the Land Use Act. For example, you, do you know that the, the certificate of occupancy that you are issued is not a guarantee that you have title to land? It is it's simply a prima facie evidence of, of, of title. And somebody else who actually have title can come around 
and set aside your certificate of occupancy. We don't want to have that process. Mm -hmm. We want to have a process where you have a COO, it is genuine, it you know, gives guarantee that you have you know, good title. And there are other issues. We, we, have, we have seen abuse of power by the governors, um, you know, in the allocation of land. Uh, people allocate, governors allocate lands to their cronies, their family members. And, and, and so uh, there has to be some checks and balances in the, in the exercise of the, of, the, of, the, of the powers of the governor to allocate land under the Land Use Act. Okay. Uh, so I think we all should, uh, you know, shoot our sword. Let's see what bill will come out of this uh, information that was shared by Boss Mustafa. But, you know, like I said, again, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't ever take it away from, from the Nigerian system, um, you, you know. Well, I want to say thank you to you, Tunji Abdulhamid and Elvis Asia for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a very short break. And when we return, I will be giving you my take. Here's my take. Now, are we really moving forward as a country? I mean, look around you. In the past five to six years, have you felt any positive change? Have our leaders at least, I mean, attempted to do anything that seems to plunge us to the top? Have we topped the poverty lists? I mean, because look, the truth is we have topped the poverty list. We've topped the worst places to live in, uh, the least peaceful country in the world, etc. Have any of our policies that the government have put out or strategies championed by these leadership helped us to get to a better place? What about the obedience to the rule of law? Do they live and die by it or do they pick and choose which they want to obey and which ones they want to ditch? How responsible are these leaders? I mean, or have they just been called leaders in name? Ask yourself as a Nigerian, what has this government and country really done for you? That leader that says he's got your best interest at heart, do you really see it in their actions? So dear Nigerians, what are you going to do? What is our fate? Do we fold our arms and, and keep watching from the sidelines as these people continue to take us for granted and, and, and watch this ship steered amiss? We do not want to sit back and watch all of this, so we need to get smart. Now, no more sitting on the fence. I am Mary Anacle, thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.